slide as well. Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to Granite Rocks Product Knowledge Seminar on MSI Hardscapes and Porcelain Products. Uh, this is the fourth of eight installments of our Product Knowledge Seminar classes that we will be hosting. Uh, for your information, I do want to state that we are recording this event for future reference and playback. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Ernie Buendrostro. I am a salesman uh, here at Granite Rock and I will be your MC and host for today. Uh, my job today as the MC is to help us navigate this meeting and make sure we are all in the right place at the right time. Uh, if you have any questions during this presentation, please add them to the chat section in Teams and we will answer as many as possible when we have time. Uh, to, make most, to make the most of everyone's time and to stay on schedule, we have to limit the number of questions that we will be answering live. Uh, but if there's any lingering questions, we will attempt to get those answered to you along with a survey upon completion of today's session. Uh, for this program, we are asking everybody to please keep themselves muted and your cameras turned off. Uh, the chat is now open, so we encourage any questions or comments throughout the meeting and presentation. Firstly, I would like to thank all of you for attending today's PK seminar on MSI. Um, today, as a presenter, we have Teresa Martin. I'm going to read off a little bit of her bio. Uh, Teresa is MSI's senior hardscape sales rep for Northern California and has been a key player introducing the Artera line to the market. She brings over 25 years of the industry. I'm sorry, she brings over 25 years of industry experience, including product knowledge and installation expertise. Teresa has been with MSI for eight years and is an ICPI board member. Founded in 1975, MSI is the leading supplier of premium surfaces in North America. MSI is committed to providing their customers with a diverse assortment of affordable and accessible flooring, countertops, wall tile, luxury vinyl tile, and hardscaping products from around the world. The MSI team focuses on developing and sourcing and distributing products that are in innovative and affordable to the end consumer. Their nationwide presence, uh, continue, continual geographical expansion, commitment to investing in technology, inventory and logistics results in the shortest lead times and the highest fill rates in the industry. By providing a tentative partner support, MSI aims to be at the form at the forefront of product and business innovation with a goal of 15% of sales from their new products. MSI's full line of hardscape products include porcelain, natural stone pavers, coping, uh, natural stone coping, stacked stone panels, veneer, cobbles, flagstones, pebbles, stepping stones, and pool tile. MSI's Artera Premium Porcelain Paver Collection offers countless design options. Crafted from durable porcelain, these all weather resistant pavers are strong, stain resistant, free, uh, freeze thaw resistant, and slip resistant. MSI's zero slip anti slip technology provides exceptional slip resistance on wet floor, far exceeding the industry standard of 0.42 dynamic coefficient of friction or DCOF value. Um, from here on out, I will actually let Teresa take over and start her presentation. So go ahead, Teresa. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for coming to this fantastic um, product knowledge seminar series that Granite Rock is putting on. Thank you so much, Granite Rock, for uh, doing this for us. Next slide. So today we're going to be talking about our Terra porcelain pavers and our company. MSI was a family-owned business. Um, Rika and Manu Shah started this company in 1975, and their two sons, both Wharton Business School graduates, um, started on with the company um, a few years later. Uh, since then, MSI has expanded and grown, and their growth has been exponential over the years. Next slide, please. MSI's mission statement. Um, as we got in our intro, 
Um, MSI is a diverse has a diverse assortment and affordable and accessible flooring, countertops, wall tile, luxury vinyl tile, hardscaping products, with more new products to come. The MSI team focuses on developing, sourcing, and distributing products that are innovative and affordable, mostly affordable. That has always been Manu's number one concern is that anybody should be able to have whatever type of material they'd like in their, in their homes. We're also, um, I believe especially, in attentive partnership support. Um, our company and the end user as well as our dealers are a complete part of our company and the most important to me. Um, we also have a culture of teamwork and respect. Next slide. MSI is a global infrastructure, and this is what makes us who we are. We not only have businesses throughout and warehouses throughout the United States, we have a tremendous amount of support across the whole world. Um, here's just a showing of where our offices are. We have both employees and warehouses in these different areas and we, where we support our um, material is being imported from. Next slide. With over, this slide actually states 31 locations. We now have 32 as Raleigh, North Carolina has already begun and started. Our warehouses across the United States. We do regular transfers from the East Coast and West Coast back and forth, as well as from Seattle down. We also have um, warehouses in Canada. We're constantly opening new locations and we've got six or seven slated for over the next 12 to 16 months. Next slide. We are experts in sourcing. This is what allows us to handle the difficult times we're in today. With our 600 suppliers over 37 countries, we bring in about 7,000 or 70,000 containers per year at this point. Um, it has greatly increased over the last five years, especially in the hardscape division. Next slide. We have actual employees of MSI on the ground in both India, Spain, Italy, Turkey, and Brazil, with more countries coming. So this allows us to have quality control in the countries in which we are importing from. Next slide. MSI has a diverse amount of products, but today we're gonna to be talking about hardscaping. So we have the Piedra Pebbles, which we now have, um, we started out with seven SKUs. We're now up to 42 SKUs. Um, we have our new fire glass collection. We've got our travertine collection. We have our Indian imported um, natural stone collection. We also have our rock mount stack stone collection with over 60 SKUs of ledgers. And we have our new engineered ledger line, which is manufactured stone veneer in the called the Toronto line. Next slide. So in our LSC was division, which MSI refers to as the hardscaping, we've got the Piedra Pebbles, we've got Earth, Rock Mount, the M Series Stack Stone, Decora, Toronto. But today's focus is going to be on our Terra Porcelain Papers. Next slide. Go ahead. Today's with the with let's talk about coronavirus for a moment the pandemic so everybody's staying at home more so in today's world everybody's outdoor living space has no longer just become a place to throw the dog outside it's now becoming a living option and it's getting a lot of attention so today's consumers are investing more in their homes go ahead and click um we've actually increased msi's presence in hardscapes by making it part of the top five trends Go ahead. Pinterest and Instagram at one point did not even show that much outdoor stuff, but now there's all kinds of inspirations and pictures for the consumers. Go ahead. Floor Covering Weekly, which is was an interior um, magazine, is now even showing um, MSI and our, our Terra Porcelain Pavers on its feature cover and of this a uh, couple months back. Go ahead. So this is a typically an interior magazine. It's called Floor Covering Weekly. You would not normally see 
an outdoor scene on their cover, but even they are beginning to realize that outdoor landscapes are where the money is in 2021. Go ahead. Next slide. Our terra porcelain pavers. Um, the benefits with our terra porcelain pavers are they are low maintenance, they're stain resistant, they're incredibly strong, high wear rating, UV resistant, freeze thaw resistant, and they both have a commercial and a lifetime residential warranty. There's also a new concern about slippage. So we have come up with a zero slip um, proprietary surface, which allows the pavers to be um, put outside with the with the knowledge that you're getting your DCOF high enough or low enough to prevent slippage outside. Next slide. How is the slip resistance determined? The zero slip proprietary anti-slip technology is um, MSI's way to assure the public that they can go ahead and put these porcelain tiles that were originally known to be interior product outside. The DCOF or dynamic coefficient of friction is a measurement that determines how much friction there is on a wet level floor when walked upon. This, this is a different type of technology than a typical concrete paver. Because these are made from porcelain, they have to have a DCOF, which is a different um, way of looking at things than concrete. For every product in our Terra collection, we are aiming for a 0 0.62 DCOF, and the industry standard is a 0 0.42, and which is actually higher than travertine. And travertine has been one of the most common exterior surfaces for pool decking. Next slide. The warranty on our Terra pavers is a residential lifetime warranty for a resistance on permanent staining, resisting mold and mildew, non-fading or discoloration subject to compliance with the care and maintenance of the, of the product. Most stains can be removed by just brush and water, spraying with a um, garden hose, or you can also use um, a household cleaner or a porcelain cleaner. Next slide. So let's discuss how are porcelain pavers made. So the first step is to take our raw materials, clay, feldspar, and silica sand, and sort and sift these products together. Go ahead for next slide. We, MSI selects the best raw materials and we, then we grind and automize them. So in the sorting and sifting of the materials, they're mixed together to eliminate particles and or contamination. This mixture is then poured into drums, which then turns the raw materials and mixes it together to create a slurry. We call this um, a slurry and it's, um, in the mixing of the product, you're gonna have porcelain balls. So similar to what you do with a thin set, when you're mixing thin set, you have a paddle. So with the porcelain balls, it assists the mixture into a milkshake consistency, or like I said, a slurry. Next slide. This mixture is then poured through the silos into the molds which condenses and compresses it. This allows it to get punched and stamped. In step five, the primer glaze, when working with a non-through porcelain product, this raw mixture is called a bisque. The primer glaze is then applied onto it, and which point is called an engolbi. The engolbi is then run through an inkjet for printing. Next slide. This inkjet is similar to what we use in our offices as an inkjet printer. So let's think back for a minute. When porcelain was a first began to become a household item, 
there was a process called a um, the process was um, called a like a screen print, like when we were screen printing all our T-shirts back in the 70s, our tie dyes. So from screen printing process, they then had a roto drum. The roto drum was a large drum that gave you a face on it. So with the screen print, you could get approximately one face printed on each tile. So you had a repetition with a the drum roll or the roto drum, they were able to get four to six faces per, per palette or per run. So now with the inkjet printing, it's hundreds of faces. It's in it's as many inkjets as you can get on there, you can create your, your faces. This is what's allowing today's porcelain to have so much color and depth and has the ability to look like a natural stone with more colors and depth. From here, the material is then run through these ovens for the baking process. The baking process or kilns is technically basically a bunch of series of ovens approximately three feet apart. The beginning temperature is 250. So they're put on the conveyor belt, they're run through the first oven or kiln at 250 and it increases the heat throughout the process but, and it gets up to about 2,300 to 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it has to, go, then the ovens go back down to 250. So your porcelain paver is on a conveyor belt. It goes through the process, starting at a lower rate of heat, heats all the way up and then comes back down. This process takes approximately 35 to 60 minutes, depending on how long the oven is. Now, the important part of this baking process is, as we all know, we make a cake at home. The cake is being made on the same day with the same ingredients same recipe, two days in a row, you're not going to have the same consistency with a cake. Same thing with baking of porcelain. This is why our quality control is so important and the process of coloring is so important. Next slide. In the quality control process, it is now computerized. So it's computer generated. It checks for color, size, and warpage of each tile as it goes through the system. We also do a physical hand check for shade and color and texture as well. And on the shade shading, there's actually each factory has a shade table. That's what they're calling it these days. And on the shade table, you're going to get every one to five pieces pulled out, physically looked at and compared to the shade, the master color on the shade table. This is um, part of our quality control. And on packaging, it's then packaged into a waxed cardboard box with edge, with edge, um, plastic edge corner pieces to protect the edges. Um, each package is approximately 200, each crate is approximately 250, 240 square feet um, with the kits, with two pieces per pallet or two pieces per box and up to between 54 and 64 pieces per pallet. Um, on the 24 by 24, it's, a, it's 240 square feet per pallet with two pieces per box. Next slide. So here's a picture of our packaging. Um, we do like to say that we have plastic boxes. We say that these can be stocked outdoors I prefer to see them interior inside, um, but if you are on a job site and you need to stock them on a job site for a few days, they should be perfectly fine handling the heat and the weather conditions. Next slide. So let's talk about installation for a moment. There's multiple installation options with our Terra Porcelain Pavers, which makes it such a great product. So you can have your typical sand set. You can have a mortar set. You can also grass set these as stepping stones. And then of course you can have your pedestal installation for rooftop deckings, um, usually a more of a commercial application. Next slide. 
On your SANSET application, you're going to do your typical um, base. You can throw a geotextile fabric between your compacted subgrade um, and your road base. And then you can have your setting sand, your bedding sand. You need to make sure that you screed. I like to see it compacted and screeded um, and sloped away from a building. Um, then you're going to use porcelain paper spacers if it's a sand set. And these spacers actually sit underneath the tiles or the, or the pavers. You're also going to need an edge restraint or a mortar set edge detail um, to keep them from moving. So you're going to put your mortar base around the entire edge and then you can sand set everything inside or you can have these go up against a curb. But the most important part on sand setting is remembering to use these spacers or some people are calling them stabilizers. The tile actually sits, each corner of the tile sits on one of these and it allows you for your four millimeter spacing and then your polymeric sand to be put in between those spaces. Teresa, if I could, yes. if I could jump in, do you, are you requiring polymeric sand for the joints or what if you just put sand in there? You can just put sands and sand in there, but there, that sand is going to migrate out. It's either going to get blown out. Um, you're going to may have issues with seed pollination from birds or um, sand or wind. Um, I prefer to see a polymeric sand, especially to help keep everything in place. Thank you. No problem. And any other questions while we have a spot? Uh, next slide. The installation of our terra pavers is very similar, similar to the installation of concrete pavers. My biggest thing and the biggest complaint that I've heard over the last four years since we've had the product is cutting it. Most contractors are very concerned about cutting. If you have a sharp porcelain blade, you have no problem. We're actually cutting here in-house um, for samples and we have our basically our warehouse staff and I've actually cut a piece. It's, it's actually much simpler than it seems. Um, so just have a nice porcelain blade, a blade made specifically for porcelain. Um, our spacers, which is our third little round um, disc there, that disc can take, you can break off the individual pieces. So if you have a corner that you need to do, you can make it into a T and you can actually break the whole right hand side off of it if you come to an edge where you don't need all four all four spots um then any any polymeric sand is fine i this is ours that we sell so that's the picture but you can use um gator you can use technos any of any of the sands is fine just make sure that you follow the directions on the manufacturing um, guidelines for whichever sand you use um, and then you cannot vibrate porcelain papers. Uh, they must be hand tacked in. And that is where I'm hearing the cost elevates uh, because they can't compact it at the end. But if you set your sand down, you, you've got it nicely screeded, you shouldn't have any issues with just setting those down, hand tapping them in, and then moving on to the next paper. Next slide. Drainage is the biggest difference between a concrete paver that's six by six and a porcelain paver that might be 24 by 48. Um, we recommend that all slopage is and all drainage is to a center, to a linear drain. You cannot use a center drain in porcelain pavers. They're just too big. You can't get that slope that you're looking for um, due to the large size. You cannot slope in four directions. You must slope in one direction and I like to see a linear drain being used. Next slide. So let's talk about some of the new products. Um, most people are familiar with our line, but we have added a lot. So the Tear Ivory, one of our most popular colors, is now a pattern. Um, this is a 12 by 12, a 12 by 24, and a 24 by 24, allowing you to have more of a more cuts with it. We were finding that not everybody liked that 24 by 24 clean look. Some people still prefer to pattern. So we added this to our collection. Next slide. 
Here we've taken a tear ivory paver, and this is actually not the pattern. Um, this is a cut pieces where they used it in a vertical application instead of a horizontal flooring application. Next slide. We've also, our number one selling product, the Corzo Gray, we've added a jumbo pattern. And this is truly a jumbo. So in this pattern, you're, you are purchasing one pallet. It is 194 square feet per pallet, and you're getting a 24 by 24, a 12 by 24, a 24 by 48, and a 24 by 36. So you're getting some beasts in there. That 24 by 48 is heavy, um, but they make lots of uh, suction cup type situations for porcelain pavers now to help out with your backs and those contractors that are leaning over all day. Next slide. Uh, here's a installation of the jumbo pattern with some pebbles at a pool. And that is our Corso gray line. That uh, mimics a granite. Next slide. Hey, Go Teresa, um, can you uh, speak a little bit to that vertical integration? Any installation yes. tips on that? Um, it would need to, so these are a typical 24 by 24 paver. If we want to back up to that vertical is fine. Next slide back. If you want to reverse one. Um, one more maybe. Let's see. There we go. So this is a fireplace. My concern is know your individual city codes. The typical weight of a 24 by 24 is 36, 34.0 pounds. So the weight is going to be the issue. But if you use a large format thin set and um, some anchoring, you'll be fine on this one. I have seen it used. We also, most of our porcelain pavers come with a half, uh, half inch complementary paver of the same color. And um, that can always be used in exchange of the two centimeters. You can go to a one centimeter or a half inch tile and have it match your flooring um, with a half inch tile. Does Thank that you. answer your question? Yeah, great. Thank you. Fantastic. All right, if we can go back, I think it's three or four slides. And right about, this is our true bluestone. So the true bluestone came out when I was asking for a more of a, a grayer look than the bluish uh, blue stone that we originally came out with in a pattern. So the true blue was our first jumbo pattern. Um, this is a fantastic product for a very modern look. Um, the colors are fantastic. It's got lots of depth and is doing very, very well in the market. Next slide. Also for 2021, we came out with fossil snow in a 24 by 24. So we had the one pattern fossil snow and it turned out everybody wanted the same uh, color in just a 24 by 24. So we went ahead and introduced that for this year and it's selling very well. Next slide. Um, as I mentioned, MSI is not your typical hardscape um, company because we have such a diverse amount of products. So we also sell LVT or luxury vinyl tile and this segment of our market has really taken off. So for the first time we have actually introduced a matching paver to go along with this LVT. Obviously LVT would only be an interior use product. It would have to be interior use but the pavers are I'm serious, almost an exact match. This is the best we've done. And the detail on these pavers are phenomenal. I was very impressed. So these are gonna come in an eight by 47 wood look plank in both our number one color of Fauna and Catala Ash. And if you notice on the slide, the little house um, icon, anytime on an MSI um, paver situation, if you see a little house like that, that is your indication that that same flooring comes in an interior um, application as well as the pavers. Next slide. So with our natural stones being difficult to import at this point due to the location and the pandemic that we've hit, we decided to come in with a midnight montage, which is a look alike to our natural stone Montauk black, which is done very well. 
this midnight montage has lots of depth. Um, it even looks like it has clefting. It has um, lots of detail. Um, it comes in both the 24 by 24, the 24 by 48, and the half inch tiles. Um, Luna Silver is our takeoff on mimicking our silver travertine, which is our number one travertine product. Um, again, with Turkey's issues, we are bringing in Luna Silver to um, help out with that and giving people an option for an Artera paver in silver. Again, in a 24 by 24, a 24 by 48, and a half inch tile. And then our quartz white is a white paver with looking like a quartzite, um, again, in the same sizing, in a half inch as well. Next slide. We also have Myra Ivory giving us a nice um, earth tone and quartz beige. These are also new for 2021. And next. Here is a uh, installation photograph, which I want to go to that deck right now. <laughs> Myra Ivory in a 24 by 24. Wherever that is at, take me now. <laughs> next slide. Here is a Benton Blanco application. This is going to be over, um, this is a wet set over pea gravel. So you cannot just set these onto the pea gravel. You're actually um, wet setting these or slurry setting these onto um, or mortar setting them um, and then moving your pea gravel around the edges. Very popular look right now. Next. So we believe one of our advantages for our Terra's porcelain pavers is the fact that we do have a coordinating coping. Um, notice I'm using the word coordinating and not matching. So why is it coordinating? So when you go back to how the pavers are made in that baking process of the kilns, you're going from 250 degrees to 2,500 degrees and then back down to 250 degrees. In that process, as the material bakes, the base material, the raw materials, if there's any change to those, if the humidity is different, if there's anything out of line with that, you're not going to get the exact same color on the next kiln run. So with our copings, they are actually not made at the same location where the pavers are made. I'm just going to be honest. These are made all in Italy, Italy, and anytime you glaze and bake or fire a tile, it's subject to variation changes in humidity, temperature, and raw materials, like I said. So always refer to our copings as coordinating. Even on that picture, those are the two same colors, but you can see the coping on this picture where it's slightly darker than the um, decking. Next. Um, and as I said, copings always so this is a picture I just took a couple days ago. So I had a customer that needed, she wasn't happy with the two centimeter coping. So all of our copings are two centimeters, which means they're only three quarters of an inch thick, approximately. So this individual wanted a thicker profile for the edge of her pool. So what we did was I took it to a fabricator and I asked them to try laminating two pieces together for me. And this is what came out. Um, it's hard to see in this, but if you could get up close, this lamination is almost perfect. I was highly impressed. So we are just showing here a two inch lamination and a one inch lamination. So we just simply took one 24 by 24 paver, stripped it down to a 12 by 24, took a strip of two inches, miter cut it and laminated it to the top. And the customer's very happy. I could not get a um, finished picture of her pool. Next slide, you're fine. So second option for when they don't want a, when your consumer doesn't want a three quarters inch edge, this individual took a 24 by 24 Corzo gray paver, sliced it to a 12 by 24, it looks like, and then just butted up underneath it another strip. 
So if you can see closely on this, the edge detail of the paver is showing, but it's not a bad edge detail. With the Corzo gray strip just tucked up underneath it like that on top of our silver travertine um, ledgers, and it gives it a nice, clean, modern look. But again, that is not something that we make. It's actually fabricated on site. It just gives you some options that you can do. Next slide. Anytime, I just threw this in because it's important that anytime you fabricate for exterior use, you must use an AB epoxy. It can be any brand, but it must have a um, resin and a hardener. So it's called an AB epoxy and then any, we can talk about that if anybody ever needs to know about that. Just give me a call. Okay, next slide. So again, people are wanting a thicker edge detail or in this new modern age, everybody wants a flat or a eased edge look. So we decided with our new colors that were introduced for 2021, um, the new 10, uh, I think it's two, four, six, eight colors. We're going to produce these in not the traditional bull nose, but with a eased edge. Some people refer to this as a modern edge. These new copings will be eased on both long sides. This will allow it to not only be used as a coping, but it will also be able to be used as a cap on a wall. This gives us a second um, option for using the, our terra pavers. Um, these would be a 3mm beveling just slightly on the top and then straight down and finished. Next slide. So bigger is better these days. So our Terra decided to go big. Like I said, we introduced all these new jumbo sizes. So this is just a collection of what you can now get in our bigger selection of 24 by 20, 48s and our jumbo uh, patterns. Next slide. Um, we've offering 12 colors in our larger formats. Next slide. And of course, our indoor outdoor collection, what flows in must flow out. Next slide. That's our Catella um, ash. Um, here we have our different series of collections. So in the Caldera collection, you have three wood look planks that are 16 by 47. They're beasts and they are beautiful. The living style collection is our Italian made um, limestone lookalikes. The Caldera collection is a Spanish collection. Uh, Concerto collection is, to me, one of the most modern looks that actually has a hashtag um, detail to it when seen up close. The Praia collection, which is three uh, marble looks uh, imitating Taj Mahal. Next slide. And our new Myra Ivory. And I threw the slide in because MSI also sells a Myra White natural limestone and with this name Myra Ivory we wanted to make sure everybody knew that you were two different things so Myra Ivory is the porcelain collection that mimics the Myra White uh, uh, collection that's both in rock mount as well as papers next slide our new legions collection again is the legion silver uh, luna silver midnight montage and quartz white just wanted to give you some finished photographs of those. Next slide. And um, finishing with a pool, showing um, your detail of the uh, coping there and letting you know that um, our Terra has lots of options. Um, we want you to think outside the box um, when using this product and we look forward to uh, hearing from you. Uh, next slide. Um, our concrete looks, we have terrazzo looks, wood looks. Concrete collection is the Benton series. The terrazzo looks are the terrazzo glacier and grease. And then we have our wood look planks and two 24 by 24 wood looks. Those two actually are not meant to have your linear lines lining up. They are supposed to be a crisscross like that. Palmwood grease and palmwood walnut. Next slide. 
Our natural stone looks, um, these are all going to mimic a natural stone. You've got your mystique multicolor there in the middle that will mimic a slate with no rust running because this is a porcelain. You also have your Argento Travertino, which is a sil another silver travertine lookalike. Um, and your travertines are your tiara beige and tiara ivory are your travertine lookalikes. Next slide. So MSI has changed. This line came out in 2019 with 31 original colors. In 2020, we added two more colors. And in 2021, we have added seven new colors, bringing us up to 40 colors. Next slide. MSI has done a lot of investing in this product line. It is truly becoming one of our number one sellers. Um, we have gone from two sizes um, in 2018, showing you the evolution of the product into 2021 with our jumbo patterns now on board. The pattern, again, you have one pattern that consists of 12 by 24, 24 by 24s, 12 by 12s, sold in eight square foot increments, and then our jumbo pattern, which is sold by the full palette only at 192 square feet with all your larger sizes. Next slide. And that pretty much wraps it up, other than for questions, and it looks like I'm just on time. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Granite Rock so much much for this amazing opportunity to talk about MSI and our Artera line. I'm happy to answer questions about any of the um, hardscape line that you may have. Thank you, Teresa. Really interesting and absolutely beautiful stuff. Um, again, we're with Teresa Martin from MSI, and uh, she's just given us a, a fabulous uh, pr presentation on porcelain tiles. Um, of all those fabulous European locations, which ones would you like to visit uh, that you talked about early, and which ones have you had the opportunity to visit? I have not gone any to any of those places yet. Um, India is definitely on my list, and uh, I'm also very interested in Italy. Yes. <laughs> very That's good. a brand new discovery for me, Italy. <laughs> You guys are welcome to type in any questions or just raise your hand if you'd like, if you've got some additional questions. Uh, let's talk about uh, freight issues and, and all the challenges that we're facing right now. Talk a little bit about what's working, what are you doing to mitigate some of the challenges and what's not working. Okay, so yes, there are challenges for sure. Um, MSI has, again, has our people on location in these countries. So that's truly a helpful aspect to us. Um, we are bringing in more containers and our buyers are purchasing more products um, in as quickly as we can. Uh, we're, this month alone, I believe we have 60 containers coming into my one warehouse, giving us um, plenty of product. We just have to be as, we have to be a little bit more, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, we need to think think outside the box. We need to um, show people, be able to show alternates um, to certain items. It, like I said, silver travertine was a problem, so we came up with the Luna silver. Um, Montauk black is from Brazil, um, sold really really well, so we came up with Midnight Montage. Um, people are looking for ease and ease of care, modern, large formatted items. And when you get to a natural stone, um, oftentimes the natural stone process will, the natural stone process having to either seal it or maintain it or not be able to get harsh chemicals on it, um, people will choose our terra porcelain paper over those. Um, shipping has has been difficult. We are out, it's out of our control, basically. Um, we do track, we, the, all the staff has a tracking system that we can actually go in and check to see exactly where the vessels are. As you know, the Port of Oakland are taking vessels and not allowing them to dock. Um, MSI has a location in every major port city. So with our ability of having our fleet of trucks, um, the amount of 
LTLs and rails that we're doing have increased, but along with that has increased a cost. Hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, that's great. And um, let's just do a uh, tip. Oh, we do have a question here. Typically, what is the lead time for a custom order? A custom order takes about 120 days from Turkey. That includes the time on the water. So we, and we do accept custom orders. Um, we've also, if Turkish travertine is not available, we've also moved into Mexico and we are importing from Mexico more than we ever have before. And we can get custom products of travertine out of Mexico. One of your sales reps just did a job not too long ago. Um, and as well as we are now moving into Peru. We have, we landed a container a few months ago from Peru and we are um, actively researching that avenue as well. Good. Sounds like you're just being creative and really um, stretching. Um, yeah. How can we get samples? Samples is simple. Just simply send me an email. Ask for a sample and uh, we'll be happy to send it off to you. Most samples are UPS. Um, usually takes 48 hours from the process, but just a simple email. Um, we like to send the samples to a dealer. Um, since we are a wholesale warehouse, um, we do have traffic that comes in and you're definitely um you're definitely welcome to send your customers in you can come in and see the showroom um if anybody would like a personalized tour of the showroom i am always available um but you can always use us as your showroom so if you have a customer that can't make a decision bring them in bring them in with yourselves or call me and refer them to me and i'll be happy to help them out um, as a wholesale warehouse, no pricing or anything is given and they can see the product. And usually if you have a contractor, um, once they come in and see our 160,000 square foot warehouse here in Hayward, they um, usually can find something they like. Great, thank you. Let's talk, I want you to uh, touch just again on a couple of things. One is cleaning um, and then cutting. Just reiterate okay. those points that you made earlier, please. No problem. So cleaning, um, there's a great, very simple product out on the market called Barkeeper's Friend. It is a, a powder cleaner that you can get at any store, any store from Walmart to Safeway, any grocery store. Any. Barkeeper's Friend is one of the best um, things I have found to clean porcelain papers. You just, spray, you just sprinkle it on, take a soft brush, brush it and hose it off. Otherwise, regular maintenance with just um, a brush and water is fine. Um, I've had a couple stubborn stain issues like under oak trees um, and I've been able to use Barkeeper's Friend to get it off. Um, other than that, we just suggest that you keep them clean like you would any, any exterior product um, or process. Uh, on cutting, porcelain blades, so porcelain blades um, are available out on the market. A wet saw is acceptable. And just to go a little slower than you normally would with a concrete paper. Um, I really haven't had any other issues. Um, in the very, very beginning, people were complaining that they were chipping as they were cutting them. But we found that almost 100% to be the case of an improper blade. So I'm sure Granite Rock has got some porcelain blades that they're more than happy to sell. And if they don't, they better get them in there. All right. Yes. Um, uh, can porcelain pavers be pressure washed? Yes, they can. We do recommend that you keep the pressure down to 16. I'm going to look at a note really quick. I just looked this up. I think it was six, 1600 PSI or less. And that's mostly to avoid the degradation of the um, joint material. You showed us some fabulous pictures. Um, how about your favorite jobs? Do you have some favorites? What and what was really what made it unique and and just breathtaking? Oh, one of my favorites was way early on. I think it was we had had the product for less than six months, and a contractor went out and he actually combined and. Uh, he combined my product with Belgard's concrete pavers and, and wall. And he used the Corzo Gray. And he used, I think, oh, maybe it was Basilite. It was Sierra Grant, one of the Sierras, I think. 
Um, it was they used a charcoal paver and my port my corzo gray um, pavers, and the two combination with the proper lighting. It was stunning. It was a very simple house, a very simple backyard that he he made it look like a million dollars. It was really, really nice. On that same project, though, we did have issues. That's when we learned about sloping. <laughs> so you must always remember that you cannot slope this to a center drain. And if you do, you're going to have the pavers rock and you don't want them to rock. You need to yeah. have them flat. Thank you. Thanks for circling back to sloping. I meant to ask you again about that. Um, Really key point. You've been great today, and uh, last chance out there, guys. Anybody else have some questions that you'd like to to ask about these fabulous porcelain paver? Uh, absolutely stunning colors, and uh, you're right. That one, that one that looked like it was on the Isle of Capri or something. I think we all need to <laughs> yeah. maybe go have a Campari and soda on the deck. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, Ernie, I'm going to uh, toss it to you, and and we'll wrap from here. All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you to everybody who joined in on today's uh, product knowledge seminar. Uh, we do appreciate your participation. Uh, I also want to personally thank uh, Teresa Martin, Keith Severson, Jackie Serrano for everything uh, they did today. Um, I really couldn't do this without them. Uh, please join us next week, uh, that's May 12th, to learn about the Belgard pavers. Same time, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., same Microsoft Teams application. Uh, moreover, you will receive a survey link sent out to you shortly. If you have a moment, we do appreciate you filling it out so that we can use your feedback to improve our seminars in the future. So that concludes today's product knowledge seminar on MSI. Be safe, everybody, and rock on. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.